Helen and Gavin are Eel's unofficial parents and have known Eel for 11 years. He seeks their counsel when he can. We met Eel when he moved in next door 10, 11 years ago. And uh, he, he'd come in parents. to parties and uh, we, we quickly became friends and confidants. Occasionally got a little depressed, um, which always concerned us if when he got depressed because uh, I think he was maybe too much on his own. Um, much better that he's met Kathleen, married, had two children. It's really lifted his spirits a lot. He's worked a lot harder. He's got a really stabilising influence in his life. And he's worked hard on the house. Um, for two beautiful children, a beautiful wife. It's, it's lovely to see. We're very, very happy. Yeah, oh, he always enlightened our life. When, whenever we had friends and he'd come in and sing and play his latest song, which always amazed everybody. Lots of applause. They loved him. Everybody kept looking for this CD. They couldn't find it. A CD he made um, with about four songs on it. Okay. It was like a showcase CD, really. Um, I'd like to see it out there because everybody loved it. And after he'd left, everybody would say, wow, who was that? We'd say, oh, that's Eel. That's Eel from next door. When, when he was running the Java Jive and booking the acts there, that, that was a frantic time of his life. The Java Jive was, a, was a, a blues and jazz club downstairs in Ponsonby where lots of bands would have an open mic night and they'd go and try out and try their new material. It was very, very successful, ran for many, many years till finally the developers moved in, it had to go. And uh, I think he had lots and lots of kind of good rows and arguments with the, with the Dutchman who ran it. And he was never very complimentary about him, really. Uh, I think they clashed a little. And then uh, that stopped. That was a bit sad because I know that Eel really enjoyed that. He was sharing a flat with uh, Anthony. Yes. Who was, who was the spaceman. And Anthony was also a collector of rubbish, paraphernalia. And what began as Alex's small studio gradually filled up with found objects, found and found and found, until Alex couldn't move anymore. And then one night Alex was in his studio and he heard a voice outside saying, Alex, Alex, help, help. He looked out and there was Anthony climbing up the drain pipe. He reached out to help him, but Anthony <laughs> fell one and a half stories straight into a rubbish skip. <laughs> where Alex had ran down and rescued him. Um, and then, when, after recovery, made him unpack the studio and return everything back to the gutters where he'd found it. That time he had his car repossessed. Oh, was that good? Oh, that was about nine years ago. Did I? Yes. Did he? Okay. Yes. I don't remember that. Oh, was that no. the night we saw him running down the road in his pyjamas? Yes. Screaming out, yeah. stop you bastard, yeah. stop! Yeah, it was about five <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I thought, what the hell's this? So I leant over the balcony and there's Eel running after his car with a tow truck <laughs> in front of him. Beats me, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Street stories. Oh, you yeah. Myth. <laughs> myth. Yeah. And, Wake up uh, the whole street. Street. Yeah. Hit myth. Hit myth. Yeah. Hidden myth. Hidden myth. yeah. Say something, Alan. I've said mine. Yeah. <laughs> I've said mine. <laughs>